La ilaha illallah. There is no God but God. There is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah. This is part of the testimony of faith from Muslims, the Shahada, the first pillar of Islam. And at first glance, this might seem that that's all it is, a testimony that you believe in Islam. But when you begin to peel back the layers to truly understand the meaning of La ilaha illallah, you begin to understand the essence of what Islam has to offer and the power that it has especially in our modern world, and especially when you begin to internalize it in your heart. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters. Every single one of us, whether you're religious or spiritual, atheist, agnostic, it doesn't matter. Each and every one of us worships. Some of us bow at the altar of materialism. We chase the fleeting satisfaction that money, or material possessions offer. Some of us venerate fame and social standing, whether we worship the celebrities, the athletes, the political figures, the social media influencers, or we worship the chasing of those things that we want for ourselves. Then there are those who put their ultimate faith in human intellect and science, believing that these alone hold the answers to life's mysteries. But among all of the common things that people worship, by far the most insidious, the most pervasive, and the most destructive is the worshipping of one's own ego, the nefs. In our modern world, the self is celebrated above all. We all have our personal highlight reels on social media. We are all chasing our personal satisfactions, our pleasures, living hedonistic, pleasure-seeking lifestyles, one dopamine rush to the next. And for many of us, this is our compass, our internal guidance system. We are led by the horse that is our ego. We self-venerate ourselves. Everything is about us, me, I that becomes a person's god. This is a deceptive deity. It promises self-gratification, but it leads to spiritual emptiness. That hole that you will feel in your heart is caused by you not having any deeper meaning in your life other than worshiping your own self, your animalistic tendencies. Now for so many of us in our increasingly secular worlds, science has become many people's religion and i will make an entire video discussing this topic because it gets deep but just know that while science is extremely valuable and it is allowing us to understand the world in better ways it is very limited in what it can actually explain see many of us point at our technological advancements our gadgets and say oh my god we are at the top we understand the world more than any other civilization because we have planes and we have phones and we have all these things that were unheard of back in the day. And while it's true that our technology is impressive in some aspects, we also have a very shallow understanding of how the world operates, a very materialistic understanding of how the world operates, especially when it comes to biological processes of the body. We understand the body in terms of a machine, in isolated fashion, but it doesn't work that way. And as our technology and our understanding increases, we understand the body in much more deeper ways than we ever did, which will shatter our arrogance of thinking we understand everything there is to know in this moment. Another thing with science is that it is limited by the instruments we use to measure it, as well as our own senses. Right? So we use a microscope to see the inner workings of a cell, but that microscope is limited as well as our eyes are limited. So I'm not saying science is, in, is not valuable. It is extremely valuable. But it is important to understand that science and human intellect alone will not be able to un understand and unravel all of life's mysteries. And just because we believe in science doesn't automatically mean that we don't 
believe in spirituality or religion. They do not contradict, especially in Islam. Right? Think back to the Islamic Golden Age, where science flourished, where we really had a better understanding of astronomy, of biology. I know that it's not taught, especially in Western textbooks, but the Islamic Golden Age took the knowledge that was already created by the Greeks, by the Persians, by other cultures, synthesized it and evolved it. Just on a side note, the modern scientific method was created by a Muslim. Modern medicine had its foundation in the Islamic world. I'm not saying they started it, but they built upon what the Greeks, what the Egyptians, the Persians, the Romans, all the other civilizations have created. The Arabs and the Persians and the Islamic civilization is what allowed it to flourish and is what actually took Europe out of the Dark Ages. But where does La ilaha illallah fit into all of this? The simple statement, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but God. When you truly contemplate, when you perform muraqaba, Islamic meditation or contemplation, on this single statement, La ilaha illallah, you begin to understand there is no God but God. There is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah that immediately begins to burn through the illusions of our self-imposed deities that we place, such as our ego, such as science, materialism, fame, all these things that many of us worship in our modern lifestyle, we begin to minimize them when we internalize in our hearts the essence of La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. There is no God but God. This is the true essence of Islam. You are connecting with something higher than yourself, higher than this material plane of existence. This is the spiritual essence of Islam, right? We talked in our previous video about how there is no uh, artistic expression of God to keep God in the metaphysical. But la ilaha illallah places your focus firmly on the oneness of God, the oneness of Allah, the oneness of existence. And so how can you begin to practice this in your life to bring this worship of the divine into your life and to minimize all the other things that will lead to that emptiness in your heart? Simple. After you pray, any prayer, but more particularly first thing in the morning, Fajr, or before you go to bed, Isha, these are the best times for it. Sit. After you're done praying, sit there. You're already in a divine uh, contemplative state. Sit there and perform dhikr, the continual re repetitive uh, statement of la ilaha illallah. You can do it out loud or you can do it in your heart. I prefer the more subtle in your heart la ilaha illallah. And each time you say la ilaha illallah, feel it, right? Your mind will wander. Bring it back to this moment, back to the statement of la ilaha illallah. Every time you say it, imagine the layers of your, uh, the deities that you place, the money, materialism, fame, science, human intellect, all these things that have become your God, begin to fade away with each repetition of la ilaha illallah. Don't do it heedlessly, don't do it mindlessly. Have the intention, the will, the ability to sit and contemplate and focus on La ilaha illallah. This is the essence of Islam and I believe it holds great spiritual power that will transform your heart, transform your entire being. La ilaha illallah is more than just a phrase. Let it be your guide. Let, let it be the sword that cuts away all the illusions. Let La ilaha illallah be your compass, your guidance in life.